In this video, we're going to be talking about linear, exponential, and quadratic functions and how to determine what type of graph is represented. So a linear function is of the function y equals mx plus b and is a straight line. An exponential function is denoted by y equals a times b raised to the x. Notice that it starts low and then it swoops up in an upward motion. Then we have our quadratic function, which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and creates a u graph. So we're going to plot some points and then determine whether the points appear to represent a linear, an exponential, or a quadratic function. So we're going to begin by taking a look at our points. So we've got our x and y axes labeled, and our points go x, y. So 4, 4 would be x, y and then 2, 0 is 2 is with the x and the y is with the 0 and so on. So we're going to go ahead and graph those. So we're going to graph 4, 4 and then 2, 0 and then 0, 0 or rather sorry 0, 0 and that was the 1, negative 1 half kind of would do those out of order um, and then negative 2 comma 4 and if we look at this it resembles that u shape of our quadratic. So we're going to say that this is a quadratic function. For part B, we're going to be graphing the points 0, 1, 2, 4, 4, 7, negative 2, negative 2, and negative 4, negative 5. So we'll begin, we're going to graph 0, 1, and then 2, comma 4, and then 4, comma 7, and then negative 2, negative 2, and negative 4, negative 5. And this definitely is looking like a straight line. And so we're going to say that this is a linear function. For part C, we're going to be graphing 0, 2, 2, 8, 1, 4, negative 1, 1, and negative 2, 1 half. So we'll start off by graphing our 2, comma 8. Then let's graph our 1, comma 4. Then we'll graph 0, comma 2, and then negative 1, 1, and negative 2, comma 1 half. And here, this is going to represent an exponential because we kind of have a curve there, but it's not making a U shape. It's getting lower, but it's not going to cross that X axis. And so this is how you can plot points and then use their shape to determine if it appears to be linear, exponential, or quadratic. So what about the differences and ratios of functions? I mean, you can use patterns between consecutive data points or pairs to determine which type of function models the data as well. And the differences of consecutive y values are called first differences. And the differences of consecutive first differences are what we call second differences. So linear functions are the first differences, and they're constant. So we're adding or subtracting by the same number. An exponential function has consecutive y values that have a common ratio, meaning that they're being multiplied or divided by the same number. A quadratic function is the second difference and they're constant. And so we have a plus or means we're adding or subtracting by the same number. So it's very similar to the linear, but instead of it being a first difference, it's gonna be a second difference. So let's kind of talk about what that looks like. So we're gonna tell whether each table of values represents a linear exponential or a quadratic function. So we'll take a look at our first graph, or rather our first table here, and we want to see what is the difference from negative 3 to negative 2. And in this case, we're adding 1. To get from a negative 2 to a negative 1, we're adding 1. To get from negative 1 to 0, we add 1. And to get from 0 to 1, we add 1. So our consecutive x's is constant. So we're increasing by 1 each time. So if we'd been increasing by 2, that would be fine as long as we did that to each number. So in this case, because we're increasing by 1 each time, we can proceed. So now we want to know, how do we get from 11 to 8? And to do that, we subtract 3. Well, what about from 8 to 5? We would subtract 3 yet again. From 5 to 2, we would subtract 3. And from 2 to negative 1, we would subtract 
3 as well. So notice that these are all being subtracted by the same number. We call this the first difference. That first bunch of red bump lines, right? We're taking the first difference. And in this case, because they're all constant, that tells us that this is going to be a linear function because our first differences are all the same. If we take a look at table B, again, we want to look at the difference in the x's. So from negative 2 to negative 1 is adding 1. And from negative 1 to 0 is 1. And from 0 to 1 is 1. And from 1 to 2 is 1. So our x's are all cons constant. So if we take a look at our y values, how do we get from 1 to 2? Well, here we can add 1. And from 2 to 4, we add 2. And those aren't the same number, so that's not going to work. But another way to get from 1 to 2 is to multiply by 2. Then to get from 2 to 4, we could multiply by 2. From 4 to 8, again, multiplying by 2. And from 8 to 16, multiplying by 2. So notice that because we didn't add or subtract, it's not going to be a first or a second difference. But we multiplied or divided, and it was the same number each time. So that tells us we have a common ratio. If we have a common ratio, then that means we have an exponential function. Because again, we multiplied or divided by the same number each time. Let's take a look at one more table. So taking a look at this third table, we can take a look at our x values, and they're consecutive. And each one is increasing by value of 1. So we can move forward. So we're going to start by trying to find our first differences. So we're going to go from negative 1 to a negative 2 means that we are subtracting 1. But then we go from a negative 2 back to a negative 1, which means that we're adding 1. To get from a negative 1 to a 2, now we're adding 3. And to get from a 2 to a 7, we're adding 5. There's also no number that I can multiply each of them by to get to the number. Because to get from a negative 1 times 2 would give me a negative 2, but a negative 2 times 2 would give me a negative 4, so that won't work. So what we see here is that it's not going to be linear because our first differences didn't work. So here's where we're going to find our second differences. So what we're going to do now this time is we're going to look at the difference between the negative 1 and the 1. So the difference between negative 1 and 1 is that we're adding 2. The difference from a 1 to a 3 is adding 2. And the difference to get from 3 to 5 is also adding 2. So notice that these numbers are all the same. These are quadratic. We've, the second difference is the quadratic level. Because those numbers are all the same, that tells us that it's quadratic because we're in the second difference and they all match. So that's how to determine if a function based off of a set of points is linear, exponential, and quadratic, whether you graph it or look at the table of values.